Yo, yo, what's up? Welcome inside the opening line. Back to be with you as we get ready. This is the last week of May. Heading into June, NBA Finals get started this week. Fantasy football coming up around the corner. Major League Baseball in full swing. Benny, how was the weekend? How was the long holiday weekend? Yeah, it's not too bad. You know, I got to uh, relax a little bit, hang out with the kids. Um, did a lot of cooking out outside, a lot of hamburgers, a lot of hot dogs, a lot of ribs this week. So it's always nice. It's always nice when you get a little time to hang with the family. As you can see, I got a little bit of color this weekend, you know. So I'm, rocking. Yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not the, uh, the, the white, white boy that I used to be. So, <laughs> got a little, this is the good. You know, I got, I, I'm half Irish and half Italian, Corey. So I burn a little bit the first time I go out in the sun. That's the Irish kid. But then after that, it turns into like a golden brown, like, you know. The Italian, the Italian side kicks out onto the side, so I got a nice little base tan to start the summer. Well, there you, there you go. You know what I'm saying. Speaking of tans, um, I was wondering how does how does Drake keep his his tone in Canada? Well, it's easy because he's got a private jet. So you, you, wake, you wake up and you're like, yo, it's going to rain today in Canada. It's like, all right, well, you hop on the G4 and you end up in Miami for the day. So, I mean, you know, when you, when you got that kind of money, it's not that big a deal. That makes sense. You know what I'm saying? It's not like he spends his whole winter in Toronto. Because I'm damn sure looking at him on TV like, this Drake has a real nice um, uh, tone. You know what I'm saying? Where's he getting this sun from? But you know what? You're right. When you have a private jet, Benny, you can change the temperature. That's it. Anytime you want, man. It's too cold up here. All right. Well, we go to the south. All good. Yep. There you go right there. Um, NBA Finals start this week. NHL Finals also off underway. Boston grabs a 1-0 series lead last night. But, Benny, for somebody who, like, never really bet NHL, is, and maybe you notice, is the, is the, is the total always five and a half? I, to, be, I, to be honest with you, I mean, like I said, I'm not a hockey guy. During yeah. winter, I'm usually all about basketball. It's kind of, of where I am. I play hockey for about four days usually during the – All-star break. During the all-star break, yeah, when there's no basketball, I'll go and read the stuff that our guys put out over here because um, our guys do a great job with the, with the DFS stuff over at, um, you know, Elite, uh, EliteFantasy.com. They do a great job with the hockey DFS stuff. And then, you know, Night Ghost with the hockey betting has been making me some money, but – I got to be honest, I, I don't know enough about it to, to make any of those decisions on my own. I just follow the professionals. I agree with I you. I the best people. I you agree know? I'm the same way. I know at the end, like, I, I think every time I see the number, it's five and a half. And I know a lot of times you'll get, that, you'll get that six goal at the end of the game when they pull the goal. You know what I mean? So yep. I don't know if that was the case last night. I believe Boston won four to two. And I knew the number was sitting there at five and a half, which it seemed like it always is. But, mm-hmm. um. Something that we do know something about the NBA. Um, finals get ready to kick off uh, a little bit later on this week. On Thursday night, you get game one in Toronto. I'm telling you, um, I, I know um, to be talked about it yesterday, it's kind of where a place that where Steph Curry uh, went to school at. Aisha Curry from, uh, from, is from the six also. Um, the desk mainly been known as the gym where Steph Curry learned to shoot at. And right now, his – number to be the finals MVP is minus 167, Benny. Well, I mean, to me, there's really two guys that are going to be the finals MVP, right? Like if Golden State wins, it's going to be Steph, you know, especially because we assume that KD is not going to play or at least not going to play the whole series. Um, and even if he does play, he's probably not going to be 100%. I don't see Clay winning it. Maybe Draymond has a chance. Um, you know, Draymond, because of what he does across the board, might be somebody who can sneak in there. But the top scorer in the series for Golden State is going to be Steph Curry. Like, that's, that's just the way it is, you know? And then when you look at the other side of the game, I mean, if Toronto wins the series, it's going to be on the back of Kawhi Leonard. So, really, the two guys that I think have the best chance to win it are going to be Steph and Kawhi. You know, again, I would have liked to be getting – at minus 160, I don't think there's a lot of value there. That's not really the way I want to go. No, I agree with you on that one. Um, if you're a Toronto supporter, Toronto to win the series is plus 230. Kawhi to win the MVP is plus 245. If Toronto wins the series, Kawhi Leonard is going to win the MVP. So you might want to put that future bet down. If you're a Toronto backer, you might want to put that future bet on Kawhi to, win, to have an MVP performance. Benny, the sweep is 4-0. It's plus 500. Mm-hmm. I, I don't like the sweep. You don't like the sweep. As much as I love Golden State, you know, Toronto and Kawhi are going to win a game. Okay. Like, they're going to win a game. They're, it's not going to be – I don't think it's going to be a four-game sweep. 
I think this is going to be a five or six game series. I expect Golden State to win. I mean, I I have money on Golden State to win, so I'm hoping Golden State wins. I could use that cash coming in. Um, but I do not I, – I really do not think this is going to wind up being a sweep. As much as I love Golden State, as good as they look, as good as they are, Toronto is not the kind of team that gets swept. You know what I mean? But Toronto is a team that fights. They fight. You and know that's I mean? why. They'll, they'll have they'll, – they'll be on the right side of one of those two – Golden State will probably be on the right side of one of those two or four point games more often, but there's going to be at least one where the guys in Toronto make the plays down the stretch and they hit the free throws and Golden State misses a shot or two. You know, I, I don't think this is going to be a sweep, so I wouldn't take the 4 0 sweep. Uh, let me ask you, wait, hold on. Let me ask you a question here. You said Kawhi was plus 245 for the MVP, right? Yep. And Toronto as a team is plus 230 to win it. Yep. So if you were a Toronto fan and you want to put money on them, is it better to just put money on the Kawhi MVP than it is to put it on that, or I put it on the Kawhi MVP because if Toronto wins the finals, if Toronto wins this series, Kawhi Leonard's going to be the MVP. Yeah, because the way I'm looking at it is like the worst case scenario. Why why wouldn't Kawhi, Kawhi be the MVP? And the only thing I can think of is because he gets hurt. And yeah. if Kawhi gets hurt, I don't see them winning the series anyway. I so I, I don't think that I don't think you're taking that much risk. I'd rather take the extra. You know, was it plus fifteen, plus twenty, or something on it? Plus fifteen, exactly. It was, it's, it's the same way with the Final Four, with the Final Four's most outstanding player. It, you, we didn't get to capitalize off it this year because Virginia had so many pieces. But right. if it seemed like a Texas Tech or a Michigan State would have won, instead of, instead of betting on them, you bet on Cassius Winston and you bet on, I forgot, uh, Jared Culver, um, yeah. and, you know, and so on and so forth. You know, those were the players to look at on those teams in the Final Four. Kind of the same theory uh, goes right here. And really any sport when you get down to it. I remember a couple years ago, um, the Super Bowl, I believe the Eagles were plus 145 and Nick Foles was like plus 350 to win the MVP. Yeah, I remember that one because a lot of people were talking about a, a way to attack it. But you got to be careful, right? Like, you know, something like that. I mean, we've seen, in the, we've seen in the Super Bowl where like some cornerback gets an interception and picks up a fumble recovery or something and ends up with the MVP and, and you get screwed. I don't think it happens in basketball, though. Because basketball really is more of like an individual sport where, you know, certain individuals are just – they're just going to be so high usage in this series. Well, you to win. Yeah, they're going to be such a focal point. Like, you know, that's why I said, like, I, like again, I love Klay Thompson. I think Klay Thompson will have a pretty decent series here. But I can't see Klay Thompson doing enough to be the MVP. So I don't have to worry really about putting money on him or hedging money on him. The only guy on Golden State that I think could take an MVP from Steph would be Draymond Green if he comes out and has, like, you know, the, the, the typical high-end Draymond Green games, the 18, 12, and 10 kind of games. You know, if he does that two or three times in the series, even with Steph scoring 25, 30 a game, you could see how Draymond could get a little bit of a piece of it. But for the most part, if Golden State wins, it's very likely to be Steph, especially now with, you know, the injuries that they have to some of the other main pieces. Yeah, and you're right. And I'm going to get back into the, the MVP props because I think it's something that's interesting in those. But uh, right quick, Benny, four-game series. For four games, is plus 460. Five games is plus 260. Six games plus 190. A seven-game series is plus 250. Yeah, I mean, again, they're expecting it to go six as well. Like I said, I think it goes five or six with the Warriors winning. Six makes sense because, you know, this Toronto team is not a team that's going to roll over. And you're not going to sweep Toronto like you sweep Portland. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's just not going to happen that way. They're going to fight. They got, they got some good players on that team. They're a defensive-minded team. Um, so I think five or six is the way. I'm not taking six at, what was it, minus 180 or whatever it was. It was plus 190, but still. Plus 190? All right, plus 190 is okay. Yeah. But, again, it's not really the way I want to attack it. I, I agree with you on that Can we one. talk about the best bet, though? Can we talk about the best bet of this whole series so far? Is the Warriors getting one in game one? I don't They're understand it. Game one. It's bounced, it's bounced around. They went from being a one-point favorite to being a one-point dog. Last night at one point, it was, it was pulled down, and then it came back up at one again. And I'm like, well, why pull it down if it comes back up at one? Um, I, I, don't, I, that's, it's, I don't understand it. Um, 61% of the bets on the Warriors, 91% of the money on the Warriors. Game one seems like a fade to public opportunity. I don't know, man. I, 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 get, I already made the bet on the Warriors. I took the Warriors' money line because they were, I think it was plus a half a point, which does nothing in basketball. It's not like there's going to be a tie. Yeah. So it was plus a half a point for like minus 112, or it was 
the Warriors were like a minus one hundred five or something. So I think I just took the Warriors to win at minus one hundred five. That's not. That's not. That's not. I don't have no problem with that either. But I kind of like this game. One number is funny. You know what I mean? It really is. Yeah. It, well, that's what I'm saying. Is it, it made me when I when I looked at it and I saw that the Warriors were getting points, I jumped on it. And then now I'm sitting here saying to myself, like, well, you know what? I mean, we don't. We pretty sure that Kawhi. Uh, Kawhi. We're pretty sure that Kevin Durant's not playing. We don't know about Andre Iguodala, who didn't play at the end of last series either. That's true. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, yes, you do still have Steph and Clay and Draymond, but then you have like, you know, you have like Alfonso McKinney's going to be playing a lot of minutes in this series, and Kevon Looney, and you know, just guys that are not, not the NBA championship caliber guys you would think of. You know what I mean? No doubt, I agree with you, but. I'm just looking at the way they're playing as a team right now. I'm looking at Toronto coming off another emotional long, another emotional long series. Sure. Look at them when they got a long break, and Kawhi Leonard is, is, is definitely a hell of a leader. But I just – I don't know. When I, when I see numbers like that, like I'm all over Golden State. Everybody's all over, all over Golden State. This, is, this says to me that Toronto wins game one. Well, Toronto did actually win the season series, if I'm not mistaken. I think they beat the twice. season series, though, Benny, how many games were with a team that full strength? They only played twice. Were the teams at full strength either one of those games? Not really. Um, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's, it's, see, it's, not, like, it's one thing when you're talking the Eastern or Western Conference because they play four times during the year. They have a lot of similar opponents that you can kind of see how they did against each other and against other teams that kind of compare to the way that those teams play and the style and all that. When you get to the finals, though, I mean, you don't have as much – you don't have as much data to go on, right? And, I mean, that's, that's really what, what I do. Like, that's, you know, sitting there looking at the data, trying to find, you know, what am I seeing here with these numbers that other people aren't seeing and, and where is the value, you know, which is why we've been going so heavy on the props in a lot of these series. Because exactly. when you have the four games that you can look at and say, all right, here's the four times they played this year, what happened, when were they at full strength, what games, you know, make the most sense – how did they attack them? How did they go about it? I mean, that's how we found things like the Giannis rebounding in the first couple of games and, and Kyle Lowry scoring points in the last couple of games after Kawhi kind of was a little bit banged up. You know, I've been riding those kind of trends. It's a lot tougher to notice the trends when you only have two games to go on. And like you said, in both of those games, you had certain guys hurt. You had other guys hurt here. You didn't have the teams that are going to be on the court here. You didn't have those teams when they met before because – you had a Kevin Durant playing or DeMarcus Cousins playing or, you know, OG Ananobi was playing minutes there too. So the minutes and everything doesn't translate as well in this series. But, you know, tomorrow is really the day that I'm going to start digging deep into that stuff. So by the time we get here for Thursday for the game, you know, hopefully I'll have some nuggets that we can look at in the, uh, in the props department that, that we can make some money on. There you go. That's way, I think that's the best way to make money in game one, two, is on those prop bets um, because that, that spread looks a little bit funny and out of whack to me. It looks like a fade to public with the Toronto or with the Toronto Warriors, with the Toronto Raptors. We'll see how that one plays out in game one. If you remember, um, I tell people sporting events that were just absolutely riveting, that were the best that I've ever seen. Um, the Fiesta Bowl, the 2001 Fiesta Bowl, Miami, uh, and not my, yeah, Miami and Florida State, the uh, the Willis McGahee game, um, one of the one of the best uh, um, sporting events I ever seen. Um, Georgetown and North Carolina in the last game at the old Brendan Byrne Arena with Pat Ewan Jr. and Tyler Hansborough and that whole you know and that and that whole rivalry right there. And then it was game one of the NBA Finals last year. Game one of the last season's NBA Finals was one of the most riveting sporting events I've ever seen in my life. Um, you know, the, the way the game was played, the, the half-court buzzer beater that everybody in the gym knew was going in, and then obviously the, the big call down the end with LeBron James and Kevin Durant, and then the J.R. Smith play, Benny. Hopefully we can be that lucky at least one time in this series. Yeah, I mean, I do expect these to be good games, right? Like, Toronto is not the kind of team that's going to roll over and play dead. You know, the fact that they are a defensive-minded team, like, I don't think this is going to be 20-point Golden State blowouts throughout the way. Like I said, I expect Golden State to win. But I, this, Benny, if, if one of these teams, if Toronto has a 15-point second-half lead, does Golden State come back and get the win? 
not every time, but they're going to do it. <laughs> not every time. Yeah. No, like against, against Portland, I was like, all right, basically every time they're coming back and they're winning that game. You know, yeah. like I never felt like they were out of it, even when they were down 15 points in the third quarter, because they go on one of those like 14 to two runs. You know what I mean? And now all of a sudden it's a, a three point game with 14 minutes left, and you just kind of had the feeling Golden State was going to pull it out. I don't think it's going to be that easy to make those kind of runs against Toronto. That's what I was saying about Toronto being good defensively and, and being like a solid team and they're efficient and they can score. You know, I, I really don't think it's going to be an easy series for Golden State. But again, I still do think Golden State is the better team. So I'm still sticking with that. No doubt. Benny, if you was to have to – have you seen the odds of finals MVP? I haven't. All right, so I want to play a little guessing game with you. Uh, Steph Curry. Well, we talked about Steph. Steph is what, 160 or something like that? Minus, minus 167. Yeah. Uh, and we also know Kawhi Leonard is plus 245. Right. I, to be honest, Corey, the only other guy I would really want to put money on would be Draymond. And what I, do you think Draymond is at? I'm hoping 400. Draymond is plus 700. All right, for plus 700, he's worth a little bit of cash. Yep. Like I said, if you, if you expect the Warriors to win like I do, right? You're going to say, okay, well, how are they going to get there? Well, you look at the Warriors last series, you know, without Durant and, and especially now without, you know, Andre Iguodala too. There's really three guys in the Warriors that are, that, that are even capable of being the MVP of the series now, right? It's Steph, it's Clay, it's Draymond. Mm -hmm. Really all Clay does is score. And he's probably going to score less than Steph. He's plus, you know I mean? he's plus 2,300. And that's where he should be. Okay. Because, again, if the only thing he does is score. If he scores, like, him and Steph are both going to have their 20 shots a game, right? Mm -hmm. So they're both going to have their 25, 35 points. The difference is Steph is also going to grab seven or eight rebounds mm -hmm. because Steph rebounds really well for a guard. Yep. And he's going to get six or seven assists, right? So Steph's overall numbers are going to be better than Clay's. So I don't see any way that Clay could win the, the, win the MVP. The only other thing that I think could happen – is, like I said, if Draymond goes out and has those 18.12 rebounds and assist games, if he comes up with two or three triple-doubles, ends the series averaging around the triple-double, you know, 15, 9, and 8 or something like that, he's the only other guy that I think you can make a case for to get the MVP over Steph Curry. Well, what about this, though? What about Kevin Durant at plus 1,600? Again, I, I still don't know if Kevin Durant's going to play. And even if Kevin Durant does play, I don't know if Kevin Durant's going to be 100%. So, I mean, again, if we hear that Durant is going to play game one, that might be worth it to put a little bit of a stab on it. Because he's already been ruled out for game one. I, that's what I'm saying. I mean, he's already out for game one. How many games of the series is he going to play? That's true. So, if he doesn't come back to game three or four, even if they win, I don't see him getting the MVP. You know, like, that, that's my big thing, which is why I think, like I said, to me it's Steph or it's Draymond. You know, Steph at minus 160, I don't really want to take. Draymond at plus 700 is worth a little bet, like a, like a $50 bet. I wouldn't go I wouldn't go a 400 yeah. or like a $200 bet on him. But, like, you know, $50 bet, $25 bet just to yep, have something. I want to say a $25 bet is something I'll probably do when I get a chance to go out there. I'm going to make my way out there before the final start, you know, just to get a couple of tickets in my hand and obviously – the UEFA League Championship, the UEFA League Final is coming up, Benny. You know what I'm saying? And that number has not moved. You know what I mean? That number, yeah. the, the Liverpool and the draw is still sitting at minus 250. And yeah. I'm, I can't get a better price anywhere. Yeah, and I honestly, I really don't think you're going to. I mean, like I said to you when you, when you told me you were on the Tottenham side of it, I mean, if you ask me who I think is going to win that game, it, it's Liverpool. Like, I, I think Liverpool is the better team there. Um, so, again, I, it is what it is, but – you know, that's the cool thing about soccer is, I mean, there's only going to be two or three goals in the whole game. So if you're lucky enough to be on the side that gets two of them, you're probably going to win. <laughs> you know what's funny about it is my, my, uh, my brother-in-law, he doesn't, he's not a big fan, but he does pay attention a little bit. He was telling me that those two teams, that these two teams are rivals. So yep. being that they're rivals, you know what I mean, could make the game a little bit more interesting because they played each other a lot. Yeah, I well, I mean they're both they're both Premier League teams. They played each other in England in various competitions already this year. So, you know, this isn't they're let's just say this, Corey. They're they're very familiar with each other. They yeah. they know they know what the other team has, they know what the other team's trying to do. It's just a matter of who's gonna go out there and execute. 
Yeah, so we'll see you got that coming up. I did not get rid of it. I held on to it. We're going to let that bitch ride this coming Saturday. And the thing about it is this is like, this is like the pre-prom. Saturday is the prom, too. So it's like I have one eye on my son and the other eye on. I know everybody's going to be like, why the hell is he watching this goddamn soccer match? But my – you're going to be all dressed up at this uh, pre-party thing with the red carpet watching soccer. People are going to be like, yo, who is this? <laughs> oh, man, Benny, today I will make my first trip to the Boogie Down Bronx. Well, I've been to the Boogie Down Bronx plenty of times. Mm -hmm. I'll make my first trip to 161st Street and River Avenue. Got that funky 635 start. Shout out to my man Adam Ronis. Sent me a text like, yo, I got a couple extra tickets. I can't make it. I was like, send them on over here. I don't mind as long as it's a nice day outside. I'm walking across the bridge, taking a nice little walk through Harlem, and then make that turn down the McCombs damn bridge and make my way over to baseball, you know, to baseball heaven. Benny, I was a fan of the old house, though. I'm an old Yankee Stadium guy. Me too. Me too. I mean, listen, I was at the game. I mean, there, I can't even tell you how many, like, big games I saw at Yankee Stadium when, when they started doing that run and they started going all through and winning all those championships. You know, playoff games, World Series games. I mean, you know, sitting in the nosebleed section, a couple games where, you know, the corporate friends of somebody I knew had some good seats and we got to sit down there. I mean, it, it's – listen, the new stadium is a lot nicer. I don't think anybody's going to argue that. Like, the old Yankee Stadium – was the stadium that was built a hundred years ago? Like it, it was wasn't. A, it was. It was a dump, but it was our yeah. dump. But exactly. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Like it, it was. It was crappy, but it was. It was home. You know what I mean? So it's tough. The old. The, the old joint. The old joint. The way the old joint was built, you were on top of them. On top, literally, legit on top of them, and yeah. that created such an, an an amazing home court advantage with that New York roar. Um. The, the, the new house, it really don't do it for me, to be honest with you. Well, I mean, it, it's like a lot of things, right? It's more corporate now, you yep. know? I mean, you, yeah, used to, yep. you used to have Yankee fans everywhere, Yankee hats, Yankee jerseys, the whole thing. Now you have, like, little Japanese guys sitting there with, the, you know, ordering, uh, ordering <laughs> you know, wine and, and sushi. sushi sitting in yeah, their stadium. Yeah, 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 you know, and, and, and meanwhile, the guys eating the hot dogs and drinking the beers are now, you know, all the way up in the top section of the thing or – yeah, I mean, I sit in the outfield all the time, man. That's, I mean, that's where the real. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bleacher creature. I'm, yeah, section, me too. I'm section 223. Bleachers, hit, bleachers probably go between 90 and 110 um, on a like a on, on a premium game night. Mm -hmm. So, but not, not and like I said, I, I I make a couple trips of the uh, a year. Now, the era that you're talking about at the old stadium, I was away for most of that championship run whether in South Carolina or in DC for school, so I never got to go to any of those games. You know, my son has never been to the old Yankee. Neither of my kids, I, let me say, have never been to the old Yankee Stadium. Yeah, my, mine are too young. I mean, I've brought my it, – it's really been like the last couple years. Like my son, I guess, you know, like you play t-ball and stuff. But, like, he really started getting into baseball, baseball, like maybe seven, eight, nine years old. So he's 10 now. It's really only been like two or three years. And I try to bring him to a couple games every year. Um you know, for the same thing, just to be – I mean, like, my dad did that with me when I was a kid. Like, you know, I didn't, we didn't have season tickets to the Yankee game, but, like, we went often enough where I, I was at the Yankee game, you know. I really started going a lot more when I was in – see, like, that whole run for the Yankees was going on, like, when I was in, like, high school and college. Yeah. So, like, we had, like – you know, when I was a junior, we cut to go watch the Yankee parade. When I was a senior, like, my whole senior class cut to go watch the Yankee parade and go hang out in the city on that day. Yeah. You know, when I was in college and they had a, and they won and they had a parade, you know, I drove back. I was at the University of Delaware. It was only, like, a two-hour ride. So I drove back the night before, you know, crashed to my parents' place, woke up in the morning, hopped the bus, went over to the city, hung out at the parade, met some of my buddies and stuff there. You know, so, I mean, I lived – I lived through that era pretty hardcore. I was at a lot of those games. I mean, I was at the Aaron Boone home run game, the, you know, the game seven against the Red Sox right there. Um, yeah, one of the best nights of my life. Mike, Mike Quath, we were talking about this, like, on a, on a train ride home from that game, you know, after hanging out and partying for a little while after that game. In my entire life, like, I've gone to tons of sporting events, and I probably will continue to go to tons of sporting events until I die. I might never see a more, like, sports culturally significant game than that Aaron Boone home run game like for the rest of my life I may never see another game that's like you know like there'll be a 30 30 about that game if there's not already one day I may never go to another game that falls into you know that kind of iconic sports yeah that's one that that you won't forget and you're right 
I was I watched the Aaron Boone home run. I was in DC, and it was just it had become like my neighbors, the people that lived around me. They were used to uh, the New York. They were used to the New York. They, I made them used to the New York fall because I had <laughs> the thing that I would say. I wouldn't say I'm watching the game. I would say I'm going to the Bronx tonight. And I would hook speakers up to the TV, and legit, everybody in the neighborhood was like, okay, we're at the Bronx tonight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, I, and that night when he hit that home run, it was kids were woken up. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was everything. Yeah. Uh, that, that, was, that was a great moment right there. I wish I could have been at the stadium that night. Probably my biggest night, at, the only memorable thing at the stadium that I've ever really been uh, through well, my sister actually threw out the first pitch one time, so that was pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, as a part of the Jackie Robinson Foundation. Um, but I was at one of the games when I was at a game when Kevin Moss hit two home runs. Okay, I remember Kevin Moss, man. I still have a bunch of his baseball cards sitting. I got a whole bunch of baseball cards sitting in my closet right now, and there's a whole bunch of Kevin Moss cards there. I thought that guy was going to be really, really Everybody good. did, Jim. <laughs> such a good start, man. It's such a good start to his career, then it just went nowhere. Yep, we was there. I think I might even have a picture of of him swinging, hitting one in the home run, little portable throwaway camera from back in the day. But tonight they got the San Diego Padres. Um, it's Lauer and my man Tanaka. I'm going to be at the game, Benny. So I want to throw a little something on this one. What do you say? Uh, you know, Tucks and Yankees are minus one eighty-seven. I'm not putting one eighty-seven dollars on. No, I mean, I mean, Tanaka Tanaka starts are usually the Yankees favored by a decent amount. So that's really the side of it I want to be on. Um, this is a lot like that game yesterday with the Astros where I said, like, at a minus 180, minus 185, I do think the Yankees are going to win, but I think the best way to use this number is as, like, part of a parlay with something else to kind of add some value to it. Yeah, no, I feel you. Um, and you really can't – I mean, even the first five, the first five total is five and a half. Total for both teams, you're saying? Yeah, in the first five. See, I don't really know if I, I – you know, the thing about Tanaka is – He's going, give, he's going to give up a home run. I was just going to say, he's going to give up a solo home run at some point during this game um, because he, he doesn't let up a lot of base runners. He's going to pitch well. But, again, he's a guy that if he falls behind two and one in the count, you're getting a fastball. Yeah. He's going to say, hey, listen, I, you know I'm throwing it. I know you're throwing it. If you hit it out of the park, fine. You guys get a run. But I'm not going to put you on base and then have to deal with, you know, a two-run home run to the next batter. I, I'll give you your solo shot. I'll attack the next guy. It's kind of the way he pitches, so he always gives one up. If you want to get a little crazy, maybe you try to find somebody on, you know, the Padres that you want to take for a, for a home run. The problem is Yankee Stadium, you're usually looking at left-handed power. Who's really the left-handed power on the Padres? Like, Hosmer's their best bat from the left side, but he's not really a power guy, you know? Yeah, I don't understand Yankee fans yesterday booing um, over this homestand, booing Manny Machado. Like, Manny Machado wanted to be a New York Yankee. The Yankees didn't want Manny Machado. You know what I'm saying? There's no reason to fool him. I, I don't I, – to be honest with you, there's a big difference between the Yankee fans that go to the new stadium and the Yankee fans that went to the old stadium. That, that's the, I'm going to leave it at that. The Yankee fans that went to the old stadium really knew baseball. The Yankee fans at the new stadium, you have a lot more people who want to be there. To, you have a lot more people who want to take selfies of themselves at the Yankee game than people who actually want to be there to watch it. reminds Yankees. me of those cats that was pro so protesting outside the Staples Center about the Lakers. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, 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 like, it's like that type of fan that's there. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, when the kid said, oh, my father had Kareem. My uncle had Magic. My other uncle had Kobe. And I've got LeBron. What have you done for me? He's been there for five months. What the hell are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? So I can definitely understand the vibes on that one, Benny. Down in Baltimore, uh, the Tigers and the Orioles, Matt Boyd and Dylan Bundy, nothing to see here, right? I mean, you, you, again, it's two of the better pitchers on both of these teams, but it's still, <laughs> still a game. I mean, Baltimore's bullpen is just so freaking bad that you would expect all those games to go over. What's the total? Is it 9, 10? Like, they're usually pretty high. 9. 9? Yeah, I mean, that's about what it should be, so – there's not much here that I really like. If I'm doing anything here, I'm actually taking the Detroit Tigers because of how bad that Baltimore bullpen is, but I'm not feeling good about it. No, nah, and you're getting them at minus 110, so you're not even getting no real value on that one. Oh, uh, you got the Cardinals and the Phillies in Philadelphia today. The total is 10 on that one. Pavetta and Wainwright, I feel like this should have been a start yesterday. Uh, this is one where I do like the over. I am not an Adam I, – I, I, let me say it this way. I used to be an Adam Wainwright fan. I'm not a fan of – 
the Adam Wainwright that they're rolling out there right now. I mean, Adam Wainwright, if I'm not mistaken, is even older than I am. And I'm almost pushing 40 at this point, Corey. So I don't know how much more this guy's got in the league, but he's not the Adam Wainwright he was in his heyday. So if anything, that's where I'd be trying to attack. You know, Adam Wainwright was a listener to Sirius XM Fantasy, may still be a listener to Sirius XM Fantasy. And I believe like that first year of his decline, he may have been drafted in like the eighth or ninth round and Wainwright was listening to the draft. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yep. And he called in, you know what I'm saying? Yep. But it's like the end of the fantasy industry saw his decline coming, even though he didn't. Like, he was like, what's going on? And everybody was like, nah, son, you about to fall off. And sure yep. enough, he did fall off. <laughs> I remember he called in and it was something along the lines of somebody just got the best seventh or eighth round draft pick of, of, yeah. of the whatever. And then he went out and pitched for about a month, and then his arm fell off, and he got hurt, and he missed most of the rest of the season. And then when he came back, his ERA was five, and really he's just never gotten back to – never gotten back to that dominant guy that he was. And, again, it, listen, here's how long Adam Wainwright's been in the league. If you remember this or not, Corey, Adam Wainwright's the guy who came in in relief and threw the curveball that buckled Carlos Beltran's knees and broke Mets fans' hearts wow. all those years ago. You remember that? That's crazy. That guy, when he, he was a reliever. That was like his first or second year in the league. They first brought him up. He still had that big-time curveball, and they had him in the bullpen. And then after that, he became Adam Wainwright, the starter for a good 10 or 12 years. But honestly, that might have been – I don't even know if that was the 2000s. That might have been the 1990s. Yeah, it might have been the late 90s. That was a – yeah, that was a minute ago. Um, I remember I – remember, um, uh, I've been, on a, I've been uh, on a road trip with uh, Cliff Floyd before, and – um. You know, Met fans would be like, that was very painful towards Met fans. Trust me, it was very painful towards Cliff Floyd, too. He got over it a little bit quicker than the the Met fans did, though. Um, We got Atlanta and Washington tonight. Freed and Strasburg. Listen, Strasburg has been awesome this year. There's a lot of people that hate on Steven Strasburg. I've always been a fan of his. Atlanta, you get him at plus money tonight. Who? Strasburg. Take it. Take it. I'll take plus money on Strasburg tonight. Plus 100. The, prob- the problem with them, to be honest with you, is their offense sucks. Yeah. The Washington Nationals offense absolutely sucks right now. And if you think about it, it makes sense because they've slowly been letting guys go who were good players for them, and they replaced them with guys that are not producing as well as the guys they let, they let go at this point. The lineup, the lineup is very top-heavy. The yeah. lineup used to be good from top to bottom. Now you have, like, you have your Trey Turner up there. You have your Soto up there. You have your Rendon up there. But then when you get to, like, fifth, sixth, seventh in the order, you're talking about, like, you know, like Matt Adams, I think, hit fifth yesterday. You got guys like, uh, what's his name, like, um, you know, Pedro something or other, the catcher. Then they got, like, you know, this just six through six through eight in that order used to be, like, solid bats that were just young guys or, like, Guys that, you know, the six, seven, eight in that order used to be like the the Daniel Murphys and the Zimmermans and the, you know, guys that were still good players. Now it's just kind of like guys that they're just throwing out there, like, you know, high strikeout guys, guys that aren't really producing. And that offense is just not scoring runs. So I'd still take a little flyer on him because I like Strasburg, but that offense sucks. Um, What else we got? Uh, the Red Sox and the Indians, Price and Plesak. A plaque, please say? Yeah. Place, yeah, I I mean, again, I, I'll probably be on the Red Sox here, but not really loving it all that I, much. I, it's, I, in Boston, minus 205. Right? it's in Boston? Yeah. Yeah, like you said, at minus 205, there's no value there. Best case scenario, that's another one that you try to, like, parlay together with something else. Yeah, a lot of those games kind of on the docket tonight, though, just a couple of baseball games. Um, that we got going down. But for the most part, elite sports betting, once you start to put it together, that's where the information will be at. I saw yesterday with John Morant. Um, what is this? I saw yesterday with John Morant started. Um, well, signed a sneaker contract with uh with Nike. Okay, good for him. No, that's. I mean, that's that's awesome. That's the way it should be. You know, he's getting some money in there to start it off. I like it. Yeah. So there you go, right there. So um, looking forward to that. They should be. Well, they 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 all over the country now. But signs a deal with Nike. I don't like. I believe it's not a signature shoe. But it's a part of the Nike family. Um, Zion Williamson will probably be coming up shortly. I've already heard some crazy numbers uh, <laughs> going around about his sneaker deal. Yeah, it, the funniest 
tweet. I, I forgot the guy's name, but if you want, you can go look at my timeline because I retweeted it out uh, a couple days ago. Funniest tweet I saw over the weekend, though. Some guy tweeted out, uh, Kawhi Leonard came over to the Eastern Conference and destroyed it in one year wearing new balances. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yo, that's a good tweet. So I, like, I forget who it is, but you can see it on my timeline. Normally, I want to give somebody credit for a tweet that good. But that was probably the best tweet I saw this weekend. It's like Kawhi came over to the Eastern Conference for one year, destroyed the entire conference in new balances. Did you see the Did you see the video of his sister? Uh, on Did you see that video? I don't think so. There was a video of his sister the night that they won, the night that they clinched. Right. They won the series, and she was talking. And in the background, you hear them watching the game in the background. And in the background, somebody says they act like they know damn. Somebody says they know damn well he ain't gonna be there next year. Now. Yeah. The reports are that that's his business manager, his uncle. That was that person in the background. Well, not for nothing, but most people didn't expect him to be here next year anyway. That's true too, baby. You know what I'm saying? So, listen. Do you think? Do you think him making it to the NBA Finals makes it more likely or less likely that he's going to be here next year? Because I think it makes it more likely somebody's going to offer him a big ass bag. That that's true too, Benny. But the, my, the thing about Kawhi Leonard is, unlike Kevin Durant and unlike some of these other superstar athletes. You can't read Kawhi Leonard. You would never know. No. You know what I'm saying? You would, you would never know. His poker face is, you know what I'm saying? You know. Yeah, yeah there's no emotion there. You, you can't really – I shouldn't say there's no emotion there. He doesn't, he doesn't let his emotions show. Like, he's not, he's not the guy who wears his heart on his sleeve where you know exactly what's going on. And he's not the guy who's out there talking in the media. But you know what? There's a lot of teams that want that. You know, there's a lot of teams out there. I mean, the New York Giants would take Kawhi Leonard in a second because, you know, he's – he, he's, he's not going to be a locker room cancer. He's going to keep his mouth shut and not be in the media. There are certain teams out there that are willing to take a guy like that. I mean, listen, he came from the Spurs, right? Like, that is the Spurs. That is yes. what a Spurs – that's what a Spurs superstar is. Somebody who's quiet, unassuming, yeah. just goes out there and goes to work every day and gets the job done. Like, that's, that's his background, you know? Speaking of which, um, and somebody uh, – some restaurant in California, somebody snapped a photo – of Steve Kerr and Greg Popovich um, at a restaurant this week. So Steve Kerr, I know the two of them are friends anyway, but uh, Steve Kerr is probably trying to get some information on Kawhi Leonard. So I, I thought that was cool, uh, Kerr and Pop. You know what I mean? Oh, dude, I would love to be a fly on the wall and just listen to that conversation. I know, so I got, can of, imagine it. Some, there's I'm, there's a, lot of, a lot of basketball knowledge sitting at that table eating some French fries. I, so I always tell you, Steve Kerr was hired by the New York Knicks. He was going to coach the New York Knicks. He was hired by the New York Knicks. And the Golden State Warrior, the Golden State job opened up, and Steve Kerr said, you know what, I think I'm going to take this one instead. you talking about one of the all-time <laughs> smart decisions because if he'd have kept that Knicks job, he'd be broadcasting right now. It, it, to be honest, he would be like he'd be like all the other guys who have gone in and out of the organization. Yeah, hold a shit. <laughs> he, wouldn't even, he wouldn't even get a broadcasting job. He would be blackballed from the NBA at this point. Like that's, that's how bad the, the the Knicks are. The kind of franchise where like you go there and and things are so bad that people are just like like no like this guy is beyond being safe. like he doesn't deserve a second chance because. He's already infected by the disease, and there's there's no fixing that. There's no he'd, cure. he'd be an assistant coach at a mid major. You know what I'm saying? The Knicks, the Knicks killed Bill Jackson. Think about <laughs> yes, that. Sir. That master, the books, the greatest coach in history. Nobody in the league will touch Bill Jackson after the debacle with the Knicks. You go to the Knicks to die. Like you better get a big Isaiah Thomas comes to mind. If, you're, you know if you're signing a contract to be part of the front office or the coaching staff of the New York Knicks. Just understand it's your last. It's your last contract. You, you better, better have whatever your next thing in life set up before you go ahead and go over to the next because it's not going to go in that direction. Yep. So there you go, right there. But I'm going to give my big piece of chicken for the weekend to uh, sh- nothing really. Can't really even think of nobody uh, to give the big piece of chicken to Benny. But I guess we give it to the boys over at Roto Grinders. Yeah, I mean that was going to be who I gave it to too. Um, you know they uh, you know went and got their. Uh, got their sale with the European company that does a lot of the betting stuff over there. So they're going to be part of that betters collective that's over there. So shout out to those guys, Cam, Cal, you know, Dan back. Uh, a lot of people got their start in the industry, including myself lurking over at Roto Grinders. So always good guys over there. Always, um, you know, always been good with me. I've always been cool with them. So 
congratulations to those guys. You guys get the big piece of well, you know what? They got a really big piece Several of chicken. Big pieces oh. of chicken. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Nah. Chicken. They're going they're going full gua or whatever you call that duck stuff that's expensive. <laughs> there you go, they right? They got full gua and caviar. They got the they got the big pieces of that today. Shout out to all the boys at Roto Grind. As you know, I'm saying, like you said, a lot of people got their start, did some work in the early days when Roto Grinder was becoming a leader in the DFS industry. So shout out to them cats right there. For my main man, Ben Ricciardi, I'm Corey Parson, the fantasy executive. The opening line, we are out.